Hey there, Tess. It's Lisa and Laura. We thought we'd give you a quick tutorial. Chopped liver here. <laughs> and Diana's the camera girl. <laughs> but we thought we'd give you a quick tutorial on how to do this um, block for um, Judy. Do we have some of the finished ones to show her? I'll go get her. Do you Mom, want to tell I think her it's Mom, for her birthday quilt? Well, I think Tess knows it was for the birthday. Okay. In case you didn't know, it was for Judy's um, 60th birthday quilt that she's turning 60 in... Um, December but it's a secret so she doesn't know about it so we th I thought I'd give you this quick tutorial and then you tell us if you think it's just too much so the first I've already cut the background square to be 12 and a half inches so that's already done for you this is the um, the applique pattern but I reversed it and I made a copy of it on some fusible stuff this has got the fusible stuff on the back so basically all you have to do is press this to the wrong side of your fabric so this is your background this pretty orange is going to be your sewing machine so on the wrong side of the fabric you'll just press that but first before you do that you have an option Can you show it up here this one Laura did so she used different fabrics kind of as accents and since her block is in the middle she has a little bird on it um, this is another one of ours and i did this one but it didn't really show up very well so and it's a little too high so i'm i'm gonna redo that one and then i did this one the other day at mom's house but i used a couple different fabrics laura <laughs> you goofball <laughs> An and then Laura <laughs> and Laura made this one the other day too, but you know she fussy cut the circle and made a different color, so it's it's fun to change it up. So we're sending you. See how pretty that is, fussy cut. Yeah, so good we're we're mailing to you your twelve and a half inch square already pre-cut for you. The orange is for your sewing machine, and then you have a choice of accent for your threads and your you know, buttons and baubles and stuff in these two colors, if you want. You totally can do something different if you like. Um, also, we thought in this center little circle here, we would do our own little signature of a sense. Laura is going to just put a Z in there, and Mom put a bird. She has a little bird, uh, and I'm going to put a little bubble bee because that's one of my signatures, and Diana's going to do a little bear print, but it, and Kathleen's going to do a fleur-de-lis. So it's totally up to you if you want to do something as like a little signature. And then on the back, on Judy's label, we're going to put the name of the sewing machine and the name and our name all on the back so she knows who did which uh, square and that kind of thing. So back to this. Uh, you're going to cut out anything you don't want to be in the same orange of the sewing machine. So I want this button to be something different. Now, this is already duplicated right there, so I can go ahead and cut it right off, and I can do that one, something different. And then I'm going to do my my bobbin, and it, or uh, my thread in a different mm -hmm. color. Orophil, by the way. It's an orophil thread. <laughs> and then this one I've got up there, so I don't really need to worry about that. And then this one is duplicated there, so I can use it on a different fabric. Laura's going to um, do the needle when she does the long arm quilting, so you don't have to worry about adding the needle or the stitching for the needle. Laura's going to add that. Okay, so if I wanted the circle, I could do it in that. The oval. You have to make the oval. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll trace it for her. This can be in this one here. And we'll just press those to the wrong side of the fabric. Should we make the thread um, gold or white? Do it white? Red red. I'm not doing it in red. <laughs> You're such high maintenance. <laughs> oh, 
why we need this Feel little button. Love. <laughs> uh, let's do this one this color. Well, I would do the top of the thread. I'm not separating those. It's all going to be one fabric. That's too little. Okay, so this is just scrap, and I'll, I'll um, draw an oval on it for you. Okay, so this is ready to go to the ironing board, but since we're leaving it for you to do, you would just press this to the back of your fabric with your iron, and it just takes a couple seconds. doesn't take very long. Then when it's pressed and fused, you're just going to cut it out right on the lines. And then when it's all done and cut out, it kind of looks kind of like that. The positioning, you'll do the same things to these pieces too. The positioning for the, the um, featherweight on the background is it's going to be an inch from the end, and it's going to be an inch from this end, and it's going to be two and a quarter inches from the base. So I've got one, two and a quarter inches, and I might as well just draw it since I've got it here. <coughs> so I've got a chalk pencil, and this should just rub right out. So I'm going to just go ahead and lightly draw the line for you to the end. So now the lines, just a hint of a line, and it'll it'll rub <coughs> out when you're done. Point at the line. Can you see the line? It's very faint. And that's what you're going to set your sewing machine on. <coughs> so the sewing machine, when it's fused, is it'll sit right on that line, an inch from the end of either end, and that's how it'll press into place. So before you press it though, you have to rip the paper off the back. My trick is that you just uh, drag a needle or a, 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 a pin through the back of the paper, and then it peels away a lot easier than if you try and pick it from the edge. Okay, so we're gonna send this uh, to you, and then you can call us with any questions. Uh, or if you think it's just too much for you at the moment, then Laura and I can do the fusing and then just send it to you for you to put in place or to do the blanket stitching. So once it's all done, I'm gonna do a tiny little zigzag around my blocks and you can either do a blanket stitch or a tiny zigzag, or if you think it's too much of you, just make Laura do it. <laughs> she could do it on her long arm. Okay, that's all there is to it. It's a quick and easy block. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye Tess.